Today's video is a request from Commander Jean-Luc Martel, one of my members. If you want to request a video topic, then consider becoming a member at the Commander tier. Thank you very much. Today we're going to be doing a new form of ship chat, and this is going to be discussing stations. We'll call it stationary chat, station chat. Let me know what you think in the comments below, stationary. So we're going to be talking specifically about Deep Space Nine, the Terroknor type station, or the Nor type station. Now it's an interesting concept, and there were a lot of ideas thrown around. There was a lot of similarity to Babylon 5 in that it was going to be this composite station built on by multiple civilizations, and you can argue who had the idea. It's also the Tower of Babel. It's just, you know, they're pulling from the same source material. It's not... It's not surprising, I don't think there was any deliberate copying, necessarily. But in any case, that didn't happen, and I, I'm quite glad. I'm, none of the concept art really sticks out to me, and is particularly Star Trek. So I'm quite glad that we got what we did, which is a purely Cardassian station. Now, it was designed by Herman Zimmerman and Rick Sternbuck, and it was then built by Tony Meininger, it was a gigantic model. You can see in some of these shots, this was a big model, and they were able to move the camera in and through. In later series, they would use a CG model as well, and I think in the final episode, I'm given to understand that that was purely a CG model. Now, it also has a very interesting as interesting aesthetic. It, it, it expands the Cardassian aesthetic, which really hadn't seen much development. We had only had the Galore at this point from TNG, so there wasn't really much to go off of. So they reasoned a rule of three. I don't think we necessarily see that in the Galore, but I, it did fit certainly well enough. Three pylons, three rings, so on and so forth. It's a, it's a very well-designed station, very pleasing and simple aesthetic. But it also features a lot, particularly you can even see on the hull plating, the design is very Art Deco already. We're not even talking about the interiors, which are very Art Deco, that very sort of 1920s, um, but it almost sets the tone for the rest of the show and then explains a lot of the other Art Deco, both the sets, but also the costumes. We may do a video discussing that. But in any case, in-universe, it is a Nor type Deep Space Nine is just one of many Nor type stations. Now, these are fortified ports and ref manufacturing facilities, and they vary in terms of what they can be used for, but they are generally found along the periphery of the Cardassian Union. They are wherever they want to set up an outpost of a, both a military outpost, but also an economic outpost, a commerce outpost. It has that double function, enabling it to expand Cardassian military and economic influence. So, in Deep Space Nine's or Terok Nors instance, it is a refinery, and this does actually play a significant feature in how it is designed. Equally, other stations might have been grain storage, uh, food storage, so on and so forth. But the whole point of it being a economic center as well as a military base plays into its design. Now, the Nor type consists of three sections effectively you have the inner core we have the promenade ops the fusion reactor very simple you then have the habitat ring oh, i should also mention with the habitat ring you actually have a huge capacity uh it's stated that deep space nine can house over seven thousand. uh we did some calculations on the discord deep space nine has a volume well in excess of that of wembley stadium so it it is large and that was just the docking ring in a habitation ring that didn't even include the pylons nor the station core it's big there's a lot of room so 7,000 people on board is quite a conservative estimate but in any case um, you have the docking ring which is actually the main center of the industrial part of the station it is the industrial center of the station uh, you have in the docking ring you have 12 outer ports along the main ring. Now these can house smaller ships. So what this was generally used for in the example of the Bajoran occupation is you would have these uh, smaller ships come up from the planet's surface carrying ore and then docking on the main ring. The ore would then be transferred off the ship and into 
the pylons. Now in the pylons are very tall. It's not just docking and cargo elevators, but there's also room for refineries in there, or in the example of a uh, agricultural station, food storage. Or would be refined on board the station and then transferred to the large cargo ships bound for the Cardassian Union at the top of, or bottom, depending on your perspective, of the pylons. And so you had all of this, all the industrial areas of the station contained to just one zone which is very handy, and it made for a very efficient operation. Cardassians know how to run things very efficiently, and this certainly was an efficient design. You would also have, in the docking rings, you would also have large amounts of temporary accommodation for those who might be just temporary guests on the station, as well as auxiliary cargo bays. There's a lot of available volume on this station. While it does feature a lot of negative space, it is surprising just how much there, room there is in this station. Remember, it's a thousand meters in diameter. It's large. But so that really covers the economic half of the station, the uh, commerce elements of the station and why they are so important as economic outposts and uh, economic infrastructure for the Cardassians. But now comes the other half, the half that I think people are perhaps more interested in, the military aspect. So as you can see, you have you have 12 docking ports, along with 6 docking pylons. 18 ships can be hosted by this station at any one time. So, a reasonable base you can house, from a Cardassian perspective, you can house two lines there. Quite good, and you could probably support even more than that. But then there are the onboard defences, and that's what we're going to get into. It has double-layered shields. You have the outer shields, which seem to cover the docking ring and the pylons like a skin because otherwise it would have a massive surface area and hits that would otherwise actually just miss would impact the shield and thus it'd be easier to drain the shield quicker whereas you're actually minimizing your target profile by having the shields set to the shape of the hull now that does mean that actually any ships on the outer docking ring are not in the station's shields so they will be vulnerable and that's kind of a subtle encouragement by the station commander and the designers that maybe during battle you should not be docked at the station. You should perhaps occupy with yourself with something more productive, unlike your betters who will be using the docking pylons, which are shielded. So you can see the Cardassian military hierarchy and philosophy at play there. But of course, it's not just going to sit there and let itself be shot at. The Nor type station is very well armed. You have on the docking pylons, remember you have upper and lower, and this goes for everything. Everything that is on the top side is also going to be mirrored on the bottom side. So in total you have 12 omnidirectional phases on the pylon. You have them on the, the upper corner, the upper edge, pointing out, and you have it closer to the where it joins onto the uh, main docking ring. You have 12 of those. Then, on the inner habitat ring, you have 12 phaser and torpedo pods which come out of the surface. They're next to the runabout pads. And they fire both torpedoes and phasers. On top of that, you then have an additional 12 rotary weapons mounts, including photon torpedo launchers and phasers. And these are located in the defense sails, which are, again, on the main, on the habitat ring. You can see the immediate priority of the Cardassians, and that is a habitat ring. That is where the main uh, central shield, which is a bubble shield, um, is also located. So there is a heavy level of centralization of weapons control. Now, I will actually briefly bring up the fire control systems, which I believe were likely improved when the Federation came in. The Federation probably simplified and brought in a lot more computer control to the fire control systems whereas I believe previously a lot of the habitat ring would have been taken up as well as the docking pylons would have probably been taken up by gunners who would have to specifically aim and coordinate their guns to fire on targets whereas certainly by the time we see it in use uh, during the Dominion War they seem to be using the the weapons almost seem to be completely computer controlled with very little uh, command input. It's much more determined by the computers. 
which allows for a fast reaction and an ability to react to a swarming threat. There's a lot of advantage to having an autonomous weapon system when you are stationary. It can The variables aren't constantly changing, it just has to track the targets. It's not moving. Computers actually have an advantage in engaging targets more effectively as a station as compared to relying on significant computer control on a starship that is itself moving. That's less reliable. Um, now, a lot, something that people have brought up is, many people have brought up, is it's surprising just how quickly Klingon and Dominion ships seem to fall at the hands of this station. They don't seem to be able to take a hit from this thing. Are their shields down? And this is not the case. It's worth remembering that because this isn't a starship, they don't have to make things as compact. There isn't the same concern for space um, as there is on a starship. So the weapons are actually of a larger caliber, particularly the Starfleet weapons. We don't know what the Cardassians would have mounted, but they would have probably been on the same hard points, just of a lower quality. But certainly the Starfleet weapons are probably more powerful than their ship-mounted counterparts. So they are mounting very powerful phasers and very powerful bombardment caliber torpedoes, which are twice the size of an ordinary photon torpedo. And that is why it is able to bring down targets so quickly. And it's very important that it does, because it needs to... It's a stationary target. It has no mobility with which to defend itself. So you need to not only have strong shields, but you also need to have strong weapons because the mobility part of your triangle is non-existent, of your tactical triangle is non-existent. So you have to instead rely on your durability and your firepower, and Deep Space Nine is certainly a durable station. Bear in mind it's quite small. Now, it's durable, but it is not invincible. Dedicated siege guns can pretty quickly overpower this station. Remember, it's a small station, a thousand meters in diameter. That's large, but as, but as a station, that's quite small. And so it's going to be very easy. And so it only takes a few volleys from a ship with dedicated siege guns to knock those shields down. And so while, you know, it is impressive, certainly compared to any starship, it's an incredible amount of firepower, many times that of a galaxy class. Impressive, especially for the Cardassians, but it shows you how important these stations were to the expansion of the Cardassian Union as, as an operating post. So while it is very tough and an extremely uh, dynamic and useful asset, an economic and military asset, the Nor type is a small fortification. You know, it belongs to a what is frankly a regional power. It was built by a regional power, not a superpower, in the form of the Cardassians. And it really will pale in comparison to a lot of other stations, but is uh, nonetheless impressive. It was critical for uh, power projection and is arguably one of the main key reasons the Cardassians were successfully able to expand their presence throughout the quadrant and become the uh, major regional power that they did. I don't think they could be doing it without a, such a well-designed and efficient station as the Nor type.